Hi, welcome to Tessero's Nerf Room. Today we're going to be taking a look at the five blasters that I think are severely underrated. At least the five that I happen to own that I think are severely underrated. <laughs> when I will get a Nerf Blaster with a set expectation for it, saying that, oh, it's gonna be mediocre, it's gonna be bad, or it's gonna be okay, and then it ends up being better than I thought it was going to be. This isn't really a repeat of the blasters that exceeded my expectations special, more blasters that I just think have gotten a little bit too bad of a rep and are actually better than people say they are. What are these five blasters? Well, let's find out. At the number 5 spot, we've got the Zombie Strike Scravenger, a blaster that was received okay, but kind of just blew under the radar after a short while, and I'm not sure why. This is the best lever action blaster I think Nerf has made, with one unfortunate caveat being the plastic quality on the priming handle. It feels a little bit flimsy, a little bit flimsier than the sling fire for sure, however the things that this blaster has to compensate for that just severely make up for that such as the abundance of tactical points, the slam fire, the smoothness of operation, and the updated performance over the slam fire, at least from what I can see. And as you can see, if you put your effort in and make a good paint job out of it, you can get it to look really cool. That's obviously kind of subjective because I really like this paint job, but overall, I just really like the Scravenger. I think that this is an extremely good blaster, and I think that it's severely underrated for what it's doing. It's an upgrade over the sling fire, and definitely something that I think a lot of people should pick up if you're in the market for lever action blasters, because this thing is so fun to use. You don't even need the stock. You can make it like a hip fire lever action blaster. It's the do everything lever action blaster. Why don't people like this one? At the number four spot, we have the Ultra Strike. This is a blaster that's still relatively new, but I already think that it's got a pretty bad reputation just because it's another version of the Ultra Amp, except this one is bigger and this one costs $50. Here's the thing though, this is the best version of that blaster that you can possibly get your hands on. Not only is it the most aesthetically pleasing to look at in my personal opinion, it has the best grip, the best stock, the best foregrip, the best trigger, and the best most accurate performance. The amp sh always shot to the left. Always it shot to the left. This one actually shoots right where you're aiming it very well. And with the iron sight thing that's built in, if you use this top little nub and line it up with the front of the barrel, you get a pretty good angle that pretty well trajects where your shot is going to go at optimal distance. If that made any sense at all, I really hope so, I'm not sure, because I feel like all I just said is word vomit soup, but I genuinely do like the Ultra Strike, even though it has the stupid mag release, it is definitely a very nice Ultra Blaster. And I do think it is one of the best blasters that you can get in the Ultra series. At the number three spot, we got the original Big Chungus Centurion, except this is the blue Centurion, so I'm kind of a little bit biased here because this is a slightly better version of the Centurion, but my point still stands overall, this blaster, is actually really good. The reason why people don't like it is because, probably because it was introducing a new ammo type at the time and had this whole proprietary magazine thing and it didn't really go above and beyond at what it was trying to do. Even though technically this blaster does outperform every elite blaster ever released. It shoots pretty hard for an elite blaster. Not to mention, it looks very cool and the draw stroke is hilarious. It had a reverse plunger, which also contributed to the problem, even though that means it can do this, which is terrifying and awesome. It doesn't come with the orange scope that's on here. I think I need to make that clear, but even without the orange scope, I think the Centurion is a blaster that's worth buying, at least for most people. The blaster is... That was weird. The blaster is very nice looking, it's very cool, and it just works well for what it's trying to do, being a big, slow sniper rifle that really gets you into the mood for the part. This blaster makes you feel like a powerful long-range sniper, even if it doesn't shoot too terribly hard. And having that giant magazine, the first time you use that magazine, you take it out of the box, oh boy, you never get that experience again. Your eyes get big, and you almost blush at how large the magazine is, because it's like, Holy crap, this is a large chungus dart that is going to fit in this magazine, and it is a large chungus magazine that's going to fit the dart. At number two, we've got the Deploy. If you don't know why this is here, allow me to break it down for you. This blaster has probably the worst reputation I've ever seen out of any Nerf blaster ever. Everybody hates this thing collectively. There are very few people who actually give this thing a chance, 
And I have no idea why, because the blaster itself is not bad. It's made well, it's comfortable, and it just works. There are excuses because it's gimmicky and because the performance is pre-elite. The performance problem can be debunked because it's pre-elite. This was an end strike blaster. This was the best that they could do at the time reasonably. As for the gimmick problem, you kind of got to think the recon was out at just about the same time as this thing was. So the recon was basically the same thing but without the gimmick, so if you didn't want the gimmick, you could just buy a recon. But for those who did want the gimmick, here's the fun gimmick. It's the same thing as the recon except now it's pump action and it springs open in a hilarious and very satisfying to watch way. There's nothing wrong with that. This blaster does what it's trying to do way better than I was ever expecting it to. The only real problem with it that I can see is the fact that it has a big spring, like a really large spring, so doing mods on it is a titanic pain in the ass, and mod kits for this thing are few and far between. Now as I bring the last blaster in here, I just have one request for you guys. Do not just immediately click off this video as soon as you see what it is. I want to at least make my point proven, and then you guys can tell me if you disagree with me in the comments. You ready? Because it is the freaking Ultra 1. Allow me to make my point clear here. I'm not saying that this is a good blaster, but the hate for this thing is insane. People have actually boycotted getting any blaster with the Nerf logo on it because of how bad this blaster was on launch, and that is for two very big, very severe reasons. One, the marketing for this thing was blown way out of proportion, and Hasbro basically said that this was going to be the best blaster ever, in which it wasn't. It was just a mediocre elite blaster. And two, that mediocre elite blaster came packaged with a new proprietary ammo type that brought nothing new to the table. The fact that this blaster was introducing a new ammo type, and the fact that the marketing went so far to try and say that it was better than it actually was, led to this thing being a nightmare. But the blaster itself is perfectly fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it at all, other than the fact that the trigger pull is really weird. But the blaster's comfortable, it's a good size, it's a decent price, it has a good capacity, the performance is decent, it works generally well, it's balanced, it's easy to use. I don't have very many complaints with the actual blaster, and yet this thing is so hated because it's an ultra blaster. If I were to modify this thing to shoot elite darts or to shoot some other dart type, chances are all of the criticisms that people had for this thing would blow away because the blaster itself really isn't bad. The blaster itself is just fine. It was all of the extra little details that Hasbro threw in that made this thing such a hated disaster of a product. And that's basically all I have for this video. I know that people are still gonna disagree with me because this entire video is nothing but hot takes since these blasters, I, I am saying they're underrated because I do think that they're underrated, but that is just my opinion. And I'm just stating why I think that. So if you guys have your own opinions on underrated blasters or reasons why you think that the reputations these blasters had were justified, let me know in the comments. But that's basically all I have for this video. Thanks for watching. And our shoutouts today are the Nerf Boys, Mr. Top Hat Wolf, Rat Mater, and Tyler Colton. I'm using the same paper that I did for the Gelfire video. But with that said, I'll see y'all next time.